One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, My Hero Academia, Dragon Ball. These are just some of the biggest names that are synonymous with Weekly Shonen Jump. One of, if not the biggest manga magazine there is. Certainly the most famous one overseas. For me, it's my favorite. There's something very special about it, and it's not just because of these big aforementioned series, which are only a drop in the bucket of hundreds of interesting manga that fill the pages of over 50 years worth of titles. Might be because its history is decently documented, you can find lists of every series that ever got serialized, all that covers, there's table of contents pages so you can compare what was in the magazine at different points in time. It's fascinating to just go through these old issues, seeing the big titles you've always heard about but never read, and then there are these other series, smaller ones, axe titles, series which have forgotten to time. Often these aren't translated, and in the case of older titles from the 70s, it takes a bit of work to find any information on them whatsoever. I think Jump really starts to shine when you look for these titles, seeing brief snippets of artwork from their covers, and inferring what they might be about from any synopsis you can find, tracing them back to their authors, and then realizing, oh, this is the one guy who did that other big manga. This leads to these smaller, personal stories of seeing mangaka start small, get a few axe titles, and eventually getting that big hit. It just makes me happy to be able to see their journey even if it's a very condensed version of it. There's all kinds of little stories like this. Sometimes a mangaka might only make one or two manga and then seemingly leave the industry. Sometimes they move magazine and find success or failure there instead. Some take long breaks and come back with a new art style and pivot to a new type of story. And others make axe manga after axe manga and somehow are still going strong. Viewing Jump and manga in general in this way creates its own meta narrative, a giant interconnected story of success and failure, each mangaka a character with their own stories. And it just feels so fitting to be in Shonen Jump. It's like the manga that run in Jump are a microcosm of Jump itself. And I love this idea of Shonen Jump so much. I'd like to take some time to look at a 2007 weekly Shonen Jump manga called Muddy something you likely haven't heard of or read, but good on you if you have. It's a really short series, totaling two volumes and 12 chapters, a number of chapters you just don't see in Modern Jump. But to my surprise, it was full of heart and had this really interesting story of a doctor-scientist type called Clay, who basically makes this humunculus boy called Muddy. It's not perfect by any means, but I loved this found family story of effectively a single father trying to raise their new and strange child. Muddy, however, wasn't a hit. It flopped with 12 chapters. But its author, Sho Aimoto, would not give up, going on to create the Shinigami Infirmary in Jump in 2009. Lasting a total of 10 volumes with 87 chapters, it was a much bigger success than Muddy. But still, it's not a manga you've likely heard of, but another one, Kimono Jihan might be. It's a still ongoing manga outside of Jump's main magazine in Jump SQ. It's even got its own anime. Later, Showa Moto would also get to create Fujiko's Bizarre Worldly Wisdom, White Snake's Miscalculation, an official JoJo's Bizarre Adventure spin-off. It's not the most in-depth rag to riches story ever, but it brings me so much joy to see someone start small, grow their art and passion little by little, making bigger things as they go, from a 12 chapter axed manga to a popular ongoing series with an anime, and it all started with Muddy. On the topic of axes, a lot of people who aren't familiar will often get upset and critique Jump's aggressive axing strategy. Other magazines do this, and honestly Jump's not as brutal as it once was, but I don't really want to defend that for now. I want to focus on what it does for the magazine and how it's impacted its legacy like how it's enabled this meta-narrative of success and failure for Jump authors, and how it's given many authors a chance, or multiple chances, to try for success in Jump. As sad as it might be for a manga to get axed, if it was more lenient, less manga would have a chance to be in Jump, and so many weird little series wouldn't exist. That chance Aimoto got with Muddy, which would likely help her in developing future works, might not have happened, and this might be the case for many other authors too. 
As a side note, this might sound a little bit like Bakuman to you if you've read it, which is a jump manga about making jump manga. And maybe it's this series I have to thank for falling in love with jump. The way it tells its stories of its mangaka, the manga they make, their struggles. When you start to look at this side by side with real jump mangaka and real manga, everything just clicks into place. It's a series I should definitely revisit considering I'm much more engrossed in Jump now, having read a couple hundred titles. I really want to pay my respects to every mangaka in Jump, every series, no matter if it's good or bad, and for some time now I've been committed to reading everything I can that has graced Jump's pages. Some things I don't read wholly if they're not my thing, but I will read a few volumes at least. Things like You Know of the Haunted Hot Springs, where I'm fine not reading 200 chapters about a horny ghost, is something I just might not read all of. But hey, maybe that's your thing and more power to you if you want to read that. I've put a lot of time into reading Jump Manga. I've read some of the longest series, One Piece obviously, Naruto, Bleach, but there's still some of the old classic series like Dragon Ball, Saint Seiya and Fist of the North Star. I still haven't read, but I'm really excited to read in the future. What I have read though is so many smaller act series and I really want to talk about them. Their authors, their art styles, maybe theorize why they got axed and what the magazine was like at that point in time. Perhaps in individual videos, looking at Jump year by year, I'd especially like to talk about the older years of Jump, which people don't really talk about as much. Jump to Many is a handful of big series, plus the ongoing manga of the last 5 or so years, but there's 50 years worth of manga, and much of it has fallen into obscurity, especially series from the 70s or 60s. I spent so much time rifling through those old series, and it's a whole other world that I'd really like to show people point people in the direction of manga that you can actually read from that period or theorize what some of these weird old series have, which all I really have to go off of is titles and a few images. I'd love to expand everyone's knowledge and ideas of what Jump was, and what it is, and what it could have been. I think it would be a lot of fun bringing to light manga people haven't read or even thought about for years. There's so much to love about Weekly Shonen Jump and the manga serialized within it. So many unique stories, each special in their own little ways. Amazing authors who put all their love and heart into their works. Every manga, every volume, every page, every panel. I love them all. I really do love Weekly Shonen Jump. Thank you for listening to this video. I just wanted to make something about Weekly Shonen Jump because it's just something I really love. I spend a lot of time just looking at old series, reading them, uh, even collecting a few of the issues that I can. And yeah, this is this is just a little project. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make any more videos, um, even though I definitely have ideas, like just diving into older jump titles or just other stuff I love. And if you have your own reasons why you love jump, you can comment them below. That can just be a series you like from the magazine or some other reason I'd like to hear. Um, you can find me on Twitter if you want, um, where I'm at Trentonart. I just mostly do artwork. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you for watching.